All right, well, welcome back to the ninth lesson in the 30-hour post-licensing course. We talked a little bit about goals, and I've already gotten one email. Uh, I want to remind you that, like I said, we just spoke about business goals. So there was nothing to talking about physical, your physical goals, your relationship goals, your spiritual goals. But you should endeavor to do the same process. I mean, if your goal is to lose weight, your activity is directly correlated to the outcome. It is very impossible for you to lose weight by never going to the gym or exercising. Once again, it's the same concept. You are not going to find a spouse if you don't ask people out. So activity is almost always di directly related to outcome. And nothing is more evident in this business. You want to talk to one person a day per week, probably won't be in this business very long. You want to talk to five every day, you're going to become very successful. Now, one of the things that we also discuss a lot in our brokerage, and I will with you, is this term called lead generation. What is lead gen? How do you do it? What is it? Lead generation is nothing more than activities that you would do that would bring people to you through some form of marketing or advertising. And lead generation can be all over the board. There's all kinds of forms of lead generation. There's email marketing. There is, uh, <clears throat> well, I was gonna save this to last, but I like this one. There's videos that you can do. You can do podcasts. For those of you that may remember, I used to do radio talk show under the name Real Estate Monkey. You know, anything that you would generate with lead, flyers, there's direct mail to uh, houses. And then here's the one that everybody thinks is the be all end all right now. And this is the one that people tend to just do. Social media is one form of lead generation. So anything that you would generate uh, an activity or an interest into you. Um, what's the one that one of my agents loves this. She writes a monthly newsletter and mails it out. All right. So those could be construed as lead generation. What is the best type of lead generation? The answer is there is no best. There may be a worst type because it's based upon you, all right? Oh, you know, there's one more lead generation we should go back here and just talk about because it's the most obvious one. You, you're the best lead generation. You talking to people, bar none, this is going to be the best, all right? <clears throat> and maybe I'm gonna retract a statement I just said. That's probably the best, without a, without a fact. You literally meeting someone at Starbucks and buying them a cup of coffee, you don't even know who they are. They're the person in front of you, you bought them a cup of coffee and go, hey, uh, I'm in real estate, here's my card. If you ever have an issue or you wanna talk about it, please give me a call. Bar none, that's the best, <clears throat> the personal contact. After that, the rest of these here are just going to be a preferential. I am not a fan of that one. There's cost involved. There is a very low turnover. I would much rather use that cost to maybe do that. I love video. I love audio. Obviously, as you're partaking of this audio content right now, I also do videos. I love podcasts. I obviously love radio. Our school does email marketing. I don't write a letter. I do some social media. The key here that I just wanted you to see is notice that there are multiple ones that we do, okay? There are multiple ones, and it may be that you do that as well for lead generation. And you may find that one of them turns out to be better than the other, and I just randomly picked that one. You may find that you get more business from a podcast than anything else. 
You may get more business from your social media posts. All right. So your lead generation is not just one item. It is going to be several items. And what you should do is sit down and think about all of the ways you can generate leads. Um, you may write bus stop benches. I think this has gone by the wayside because I think, don't quote me, I think that they have removed a lot of the advertising. Billboards out on the highway. Grocery carts. There's a girl in Bloomington who I can tell you her name and her phone number. Never met her. Grocery. I can't spell. But every time I went to Kroger, I saw her face on the grocery cart. All right. So any of these can be lead generation. And we could play this game forever. I mean, you could write a dozen more right here beside all of that. And you may order them in some sort of order to determine what you think is best. Okay. Now, one of the things I want you to be aware of is this statement right here. Should you have a budget for lead gen? Most certainly you should have a budget. And let's go back to this list. <coughs> what I see a lot is people choosing this one because it's free. Oh, Facebook's free. All right, to some degree. Um, we're not gonna get into that whole, I gotta pay for internet and yada, yada, yada. Just assume posting on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or, or any of those others are free. So people erroneously try and rely on this one as being a heavy content and they do that because of the cost. I am telling you now that once again, activity produces outcome. And in some of these activities, you may have to spend money. That is fine with spending money. I'm all fine with that. Side note, that one, which I said is the best, is also free. And a lot of people erroneously want to do one of these others to avoid this one. All right. People don't want to go out and meet people or talk to them. I used to do something with my agents that I haven't done in years uh, because I got a lot of pushback, but it was always successful, was I would take them to Denny's for lunch. And before we left, I made them talk to two other people in Denny's. One could have been the waitress. One was the person sitting at three tables down. Now, I get that whole people have to go, well, I'm intruding upon their lunch. Remember, we mentioned this earlier. As long as you're assuming that you're giving value and you feel you're giving value to people, it's really not an intrusion. And I'm not saying you had to sit down and have lunch with them and spend 40 minutes. You could, on your way out, just stop by over the shoulder and lay the card on the table and go, hey, my name is Raymond Modulin. I'm with the Modulin Group. Uh, I'm a very successful agent. If you're ever thinking about buying or selling a home, here's my card. Just give me a call. Have a nice Denny slam. See you later. It could be something like that. Most people specifically, if they are in the market, are not going to see that as an intrusion. So there is nothing that's ever going to beat the personal interaction period. Okay. A lot of people assume social media will because it's free, which leads us back to what we were just talking about. There should be a cost. And one of the things that you need to do back to that whole goals theory, when you were making money, remember you should set some aside for taxes. You probably should set some aside for marketing as well. Because what you hope is this marketing is going to lead to all these other deals, which will make 3000 and those lead to that. Okay. So you need to understand that there is a cost for lead generation. Now, here's the one that everybody doesn't want to hear. And I know you're all going to have a heart attack, but I'm telling you now, I personally have agents that are using this word and they are making anywhere from $3 and 50 cents to almost $4 
for every one dollar of advertisement. At what level would you stop advertising? Well, in theory, you never would. If you're making four times your return on your spend, that is a good spend. What I'm meaning is if I spend a hundred grand and I make 400 grand, how many times a year would you do that deal? I do that deal every year, probably twice on some years. So there is a cost to lead generation. You better be prepared for that cost. Now that doesn't mean that you can't add in some of these free things. I would not see that as the be all end all. I see a lot of new agents and they're erroneously tell me, well, I'm on, uh, I do a lot of lead gen. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter and I'm on LinkedIn and I go, okay, so those are all the same thing. All right. They serve different purposes. I get it, but virtually that is a social media post. Those all would fall under. There are a blue million. Uh, I think I sat down one day and I came up with 109 different ways for lead generation. So if you come to me and tell me that you've only got four or five, one, you haven't put a lot of thought into it because there are m numerous ways to do lead generation. Now, once you start your lead generation program, you need to understand that you have to follow up on your lead gen activities. Once you have gotten those two names, and I told you during that process that follow-up doesn't count. It didn't count for generating activity. It does and most certainly count for closing because you must now follow up. You don't look at me and go, well, I've got 100 names on my database. I'm like, okay, when was the last time you talked to any of them? Oh, I never have, but I got them on my list. That is virtually wasted time because you have to nurture that lead once you cultivate it, all right? So let's use the planting analogy. Once you plant that seed in that person's head about, I'm an agent, I can help you, the market's good, the interest rates are low, there's a lot of good deals, and then you walk away and never call them again, you virtually wasted their time and yours because if you're waiting for them to just call you out of the blue and go, hey, I saw you three weeks ago. I don't know who you are, but can you help me buy a house? No, because most of the time you can drive a golf ball in eight different directions and drive, bounce it off nine other real estate agents in this market. So if you're relying on your one three minute interaction with someone two weeks ago to call you, that's not going to happen. You must follow up because I'm here to tell you now that gaining a new client is always more expensive than keeping an old client. And you want to make sure that once you have got them in your clutches, so to speak, that you are actually actively using some sort of campaign to contact them, all right? That would be some sort of drip email can, campaign, some sort of direct messaging campaign. Um, and these are not people that are counted in your two daily activities. These are follow-up. Now, in your follow-up, I'm not saying that you have to email them every day. You might wanna email them once a week, once every two weeks, whatever you feel is comfortable. I would not go any further apart then once every couple weeks, potentially maybe once a month because of the way that people buy homes. It's ironically funny is nobody wants to buy a home until they do. And that decision usually happens within a day or two or three. All right. And you need to be in that window. Otherwise they probably remembered some other agent or some other big name high roller agent has already contacted them in that window. So keep that in mind as well. One of the things you need to understand is this whole referral that we talked about and one of your best sales reps is a previous client. That actually can be a lead gen agent for you. And what I mean by that is that whole referral concept. Once you have a client and they have closed, you should also still maintain contact because that person is going to have family members that may move or they may be moving as well. The, the, 
goes to a whole separate conversation about how long do you contact them. Some people contact them for two years past the time they close. Some people don't ever. Somewhere between those two is probably the right answer, okay? But if you've got a client that you have done a great job with and you manage to close them and you, ref uh, you, know, you contact them a couple weeks after closing, hey, thanks very much. Here's a couple of my business cards. Please hand these out to friends and family and I'll take care of them like I took care of you. So getting that referral client to be one of your lead gen agents is also one of those topics that we didn't even mention on that list a minute ago. Now we talked about email marketing as a lead gen tool. We use this as the, at the school. Probably you sitting here listening to this course is a result of our lead generation. Uh, our email lead generation, you probably got an email. Hey, don't forget, you've been one year since your course. You now have to take the two year, uh, 30 hour post licensing course and you went, oh yeah, I need to do that. Here's the email, let me go to it. That's the exact concept, all right? And that email generation, uh, that email that you send out to your lead generation can be very simplistic with an Excel spreadsheet or it can be very costly and expensive well, with some kind of CRM tool like Salesforce and that all depends upon, once again, how much money have you budgeted. And as your list gets bigger, you may budget more money because you have now obviously got more activity, which means more results. More results mean more money. And now I can put a higher percentage into my lead gen. So now I'm using something like Salesforce to email people or uh, send in blue or you know constant contact rather than me just sitting down with Outlook and sending Bob an email, all right? So once again, there are many courses out there about lead generation. I, I taught a couple on video, lead gen through video. We taught a couple on email uh, lead generation. Uh, obviously, bar none is the personal contact. Uh, I think that's going to be number one. If you hesitate with the personal, you better damn well be good on the other 108 that I came up with to avoid making that personal contact. All right, we're not done yet by no means, so stick around and hang on.